Enterprising Development. Thank you very much. Um, this is the on-site green energy hydrogen production guide. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is uh, Jack Monsell. I'm with Secure Supply USA. Thank you all for having us here. Thank you so much for asking me to come up today to address everyone here in this fine room. I've heard some incredible presentations this morning. Um, where we are right now in the state of flux with the transition of powers and where we are right now and how we take this torch of renewable energy into the next level. Um, I, can, I can probably take the rest of the afternoon and discuss <laughs> what hydrogen has to offer at this point, but I can't, I won't. I'll, I'll be here for the duration and into the, into the evening. I'd like to connect with anyone and everyone in this room if I could. Renewable energy has an Achilles heel, and that is storage. The sun goes down, the wind stops blowing, and those are two uh, of, the, of the metrics that we're using for reference for renewable energy, solar and wind. So enter the era of the battery, the storage vehicle. Now, Mr. Musk is getting a, a reaping a whirlwind right now from his Tesla batteries. Why? Because there's an incredible void and there's a, great, a void of products or technologies to be able to take up that void for storage and because there aren't anyone capable at this point in time for being able to come out to market with something grid parity. I believe that hydrogen, green hydrogen, is a solution for storage. Green hydrogen is the hydrogen that's created from renewable energy. Brown hydrogen and blue hydrogen are from steam, methane reformed, or fossil fuel derived hydrogen. It's not clean, it's not carbon free, and as far as I'm concerned, it's fossil 2.0. Okay, it's fossil redux. So let's, let me get my, 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 my political stance correct. I believe that there is a bridge for the hydrogen infrastructure to include natural gas, steam, methane reformed the carbon atom in the supply chain for hydrogen, and we need to embrace that. I don't want to be misconstrued in saying that I'm throwing high, uh, uh, anything but green hydrogen under the bus. I believe that we need an infrastructure and an investment class um, Manhattan project to occur at this point in time to bring hydrogen to bear. I have plans and, and, and mechanisms in place I'm a hydrogen developer, turnkey, and I'm currently uh, inking the first uh, deal, which will be in Alpha, New Jersey, for a commercial production facility that's going to be a mineral water bottling plant infusing hydrogen, which was my recommendation. If you ever Google hydrogenated water, do that at some point in time. Um, it's incredibly beneficial for you. But this plant that I'm building is going to be 2.5 megawatts solar on the ground and a hydrolyzer facility, megawatt class, taking that uh, solar energy from the array and the world's only in existence megawatt class ice engine fueled by hydrogen. So I have all the components put together. That's what Secure Supply USA is. Let me move along. Can you just explain that a little bit more? I, so it's hydrogen fuel cell or what? what I'll, I'll, let me, I'll, this, yeah. I, I go through all of it. I, Thank you for the interest. Uh, this is the arrow up or arrow to the right? Yes. So I'm saying that uh, a secure, inexhaustible, carbon-free energy supply with megawatt scalability is what I'm talking about here. I've got a compartmentalized, modularized, scalable, carbon-free, megawatt class, drop-in ready, value-add to the investment class asset portfolios for anything renewable, wind, geothermal, solar, hydro. So I'm going to speak largely in just broad brush terms for solar and wind, mostly solar because there's a lot of, there's ITC with solar, there's um, SREX in New Jersey specifically, shame on New York State by the way for not having an SREC, I'll say that. New York State and California, two most progressive states. Connecticut's not far behind, neither is Massachusetts. This is ground zero for renewable revolution. 
We should be doing more about SRECs in New York State. We should also be following Canada's lead with that carbon credit, monetizing carbon. Okay, that's what's going to bring ROI and long-term revenue uh, to bear. A renewable sustainable energy supply for a green H2 decentralized prime power infrastructure. I am talking about leading out with a national plan. I'm actually working uh, with Pete right now on a two-pager to provide by coast, by coastal, multi, uh, um, uh, two me 200 megawatt uh, solar facilities along with a geothermal project in California, a 50 station uh, um, uh, hydrogen re uh, refueling station, 25 in the west coast, 25 in the east. Uh, I'm talking about uh, buying the uh, electrolyzer manufacturer and I'm also talking about putting down uh, the ability to put engine hubs for microgrids. Now, I'm also in discussions with someone right now that's running for mayor in New York that is willing to take up the gauntlet of microgrids. There's a microgrid project already in place in Brooklyn where there's a natural gas uh, uh, fuel cell, fire fuel cell in place right next to a, um, a metal container full of essentially motorcycle batteries, if you will. That's not a microgrid, in my opinion. A microgrid is something that generates power. What that, what that is, is that's a four to six hour battery. And if another superstorm comes across, because we're in the age now of global weirding, and it will, then you've got, the first thing that Con Ed's gonna do is shut down the natural gas supply, so you've got four hours, unless you've got storage of gas. I plan on putting uh, a multi, multi uh, 100 megawatt facility solar array in New Jersey, possibly in Massachusetts, again, because of the SREC, and use 100% self-consumption, create hydrogen gas, and I've got a virtual pipeline of tractor trailers to pressurize high pressure uh, hydrogen delivered safety uh, per pod refueling uh, for these um, microgrids. I could also do individual commercial uh, um, applications behind the meter or in front of the meter. I can buffer the grid. I'm grid agnostic. Secure Supply USA provides a cost-efficient, sustainable, renewable energy supply for green hydrogen to provide prime power electricity generation that is fully secure, grid agnostic, and provides a closed loop for localized and decentralized energy. A reliable microgrid, megawatt scale, ready for deployment anywhere in the world. We provide commercial and industrial clients with turnkey renewable solutions, offering uh, megawatt scale green hydrogen production plants, readily deployed, customi customi uh, customi customizable, and fully scalable. So that, in a sense, you can read, but I wanted to say it out loud. What I'm saying is we can supply, provide a secure energy supply. It's a completely fresh new look for a new emergent energy source. And it's prime power. Prime power means 24-7, 365. I'm talking about a renewable feedstock as well. Electrolyzing water, taking green hydrogen off it, 99.9999% pure fuel cell grade hydrogen. That would be for either two revenue streams. The low-hanging fruit is the fuel cell industry for automotive. So California's got 30 hydrogen refueling stations. That's why Toyota and Honda uh, are starting to dump fuel cell vehicles over there in California, and they're selling, and they're selling really well. There's an infrastructure, and there's an ability to refuel. There isn't any here. I put this project down on the ground in Alpha, New Jersey, and I connect with some of you in this room tonight, and we've get, we get this infrastructure going, and, I, and then we've now jump-started a whole other, whole other industry for the automotive. We're setting an example by being an example. We're bringing green hydrogen in. Here's an education. Peter says, Jack, you've got to try to educate them in 15 minutes. 98% of the hydrogen that's out there right now fueling these fuel cell vehicles is brown and blue hydrogen. Again, I'm not going to throw that under the bus. We need that. That's driving this. But the one type of hydrogen that's not being mentioned or that there's any infrastructure as of yet in the United States is green. Hold on to that thought for a moment because green hydrogen is a big deal. Green hydrogen is now a battery. 
for renewable energy. Remember I told you there's an Achilles heel to renewable energy? The Achilles heel is storage. So I beg for you to think for a moment about the storage aspect of renewable energy. It's not a chemical solid state battery. Yes, there's a place for a battery. However, the universe runs on hydrogen. It is the best battery there ever was and ever will be. It's got a high density energy storage capability, but the Hindenburg. Listen, the first four seconds of that was hydrogen. I'll agree. That was painted with a highly flammable paint. And that's the bottom line with the Hindenburg. The reality with hydrogen and safety is it's very safe. It's more safe than, than, than anything fossil. It's more safe than high density lithium storage. Hydrogen has an affinity to be the light, lightest element in the universe. So if hydrogen is to be released from its vessel, it will leave at 45 miles per hour from the center of the Earth, go straight out into space, 45 miles per hour. It cannot spill. The pressurized vessels that they, we have that are specialized pressure, uh, high pressure vessels, very safe, non-woven carbon fiber, resin. Uh, you can't put hydrogen. The toughest thing about hydrogen storage is holding on to that element. If you put it inside steel, something called debrittling happens. It's such a small element, it'll actually find its way through the lattice work of the steel molecule and make that weak. The hydrogen is very, very cool. We're destined. Uh, to bring hydrogen. Thoughts? Uh, these are these are points I've already brought up. I know we're stressed for time, so I'm going to try to compress. But I said and I want to make this point very clear. Green hydrogen is very important from this point forward for anyone in this room for your education purposes. Green hydrogen must come out. Green hydrogen is done through electrolysis from water, and either grid tide or renewable energy. So having the capability to do megawatt class green hydrogen is not something anyone in the world has been able to do right now to any good effect. I believe our company has probably owns the next three to five years to be able to roll this out before other competitors come in and electrolyze water at the megawatt scale. But I have something a little different. I also have a megawatt class ice engine that's fueled by hydrogen. All of my components are made in the United States. All of my components are made in the United States. So we are Secure Supply USA. The moniker is a secure supply for the, of energy for the United States of America. I want to make New York City ground zero for us with microgrids in a good way ground zero. And I want to take green hydrogen to the next level. I want to put it on the ground. I'm doing that myself with a privateer. But I could have done it a lot easier if I had the ears of some of you. Some of the presentations I heard this morning about project finance and debt and equity and Deloitte talking about the refined metrics of looking at uh, where these indices are uh, for, for finding out where profitability is. All of this, I, I believe the rising tide with hydrogen is going to raise a lot of ships. It already has with renewable energy. Fossil 2.0, drill, baby, drill. I don't believe we can afford to let that happen. The millennials that spoke this morning, the representative for the millennials, we have this as a legacy now to carry renewable energy forward to a greater, to, to a greater extent, uh, extent with greater uh, efficacy. And I mentioned in the last part, that what, I'm what I'm talking about is evolutionary. No, it's not. It's revolutionary. And we really need to be the, the, the stalwarts here, and we need to lead with our capital. I'm wrong, Pete. Fuel cells, as I said before, are also not ready for prime time. And I don't want to throw fuel cells under the bus, but megawatt class uh, pure hydrogen fuel fuel cells, very expensive and they're very temperamental. If you fuel them with something that's not pure, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will fail. And if they fail, and they're going to fail big. It's going to be so, – so my solution to this is the megawatt class ice engine. Right? Now, fuel cells are coming up, and they're going to, and they're, we're working it out. I do not want to be misrepresented in, in, in thinking that I'm um, anti-fuel. I love fuel cells. I believe there's a place for the solid-state chemical battery, and I believe there's a place for the fuel cell as well. But I'm bringing something out that's brand new, which is the megawatt-class ice engine. So I've said before that we're talking about microgrids. 
So when you think about hydrogen, you're thinking about fuel cell vehicles. It's not just about fuel cell vehicles anymore. Green hydrogen, you know, it's not, it, it's, it's, it's not your mom and pop's hydrogen. That's always ridiculous. How did that come out of there? But the bottom line is we can, we can do prime, prime power. We can do megawatt-class microgrids uh, behind the meter. Grid tied. It's grid agnostic. Great for islands. John was talking about with, with the wind turbines. Long Island is definitely an island. We should talk about bringing microgrids to Long Island. Renewable energy, by the way, solar, for example, can do supply and delivery. It can't do supply, delivery, and demand. This is what hydrogen can bring now. Renewable energy will be able to do supply, delivery, demand, and storage. And the feedstock is renewable, carbon, carbon free. So this can take the, 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 the addition of green hydrogen to renewable energy can make a, a renewable energy resurgence and a revolution um, and become profitable again. Some solar farms are not profitable at this point in time. They're throttled. Their ROI is throttled. Why? Because the PPA from the utility will throttle them. How many states have shut down massive assets of renewable energy? I'm stressed for time, I imagine. I'd like to talk yeah, more. It's way over. <laughs> well, Jeff, we're, we're bumping up against lunch. We have one more speaker, so I'm going to ask you to finish this. That's the, that's the one line side profile? Yeah, we did that. That's what the module looks like? The same technology vendor that I use is supplying the space station and Virginia class subs. Only now, for the first time, has given us the ability, my company, to come out and put this in the commercial sector. That's the size and the scale of the of the uh, uh, component looks like. That's holding the electrolyzer. There's another container that holds the compressor, and there's an engine container that sits next to it. It's completely scalar. I can do up to 500 uh, megawatt. This is the smart uh, reporting software that's on it. I'll use global satellite technology. My office will know where every single project is 24-7, 365. We also have the ability to do refueling stations. So I'm a turnkey, I'm offering a turnkey solution for hydrogen production, virtual pipeline delivering, those are one of the pods that are replaced or microgrid for, for fuel. That is, ladies and gentlemen, the world's first megawatt class hydrogen fuel ice engine. That's a big deal. This is what an engine hub looks like with many ice engines. So I can do a 50 megawatt 500 megawatt if need be, but say, for example, 50 megawatt um, engine hub fueled by uh, hydrogen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our last speaker before lunch.